Welcome to my lecture online. Here's our next couple of exercises where we're trying to determine the measure of angle 1 and the measure of angle 2. Again, these little indicators here indicate that these two lines are parallel to one another and here's a transversal. So let's talk about the first exercise. Here notice that angle 2 and 140 degrees, these two angles are what we call corresponding angles. And by the postulate of corresponding angles, we know that their measures must be the same. Therefore, we can claim that the measure of angle 2 equals 140 degrees. Now we take a look and see that angle 1 and angle 2 are opposite angles, and we know that opposite angles must have the same measure. Therefore, we know that the measure of angle 1 must be equal to the measure of angle 2, and therefore must be equal to 140 degrees as well. Now let's take a look at our second drawing right here. Notice that 132 degrees and angle 1 are supplementary angles, and angle 2 and angle with a measure of 132 degrees, they're called alternate interior angles. So we can start with the easy one. We know that by the theorem of alternate interior angles that their measures must be the same. Therefore, the measure for angle 2 must also be 132 degrees. Now we can see that angle 1 and angle 2 are consecutive interior angles, or we can say that angle 1 and 132 degrees are supplementary angles. Either way, the rule is that those angles must add up to 180 degrees, at least their measures must add up to 180 degrees, which means that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 must add up to 180 degrees. And we know that the measure of angle 2 is 132 degrees, so the measure of angle 1 plus 132, that should be a 3 right here, 32 degrees adds up to 180 degrees. Subtract 132 from both sides, so the measure of angle 1 equals 180 degrees minus 132 degrees. The difference is 48 degrees, so the measure of angle 1 equals 48 degrees. 48 plus 132 does indeed add up to 180, and that is how it's done.